Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronix Retonatri? And this tutorial, I'll be showing how you can easily smooth and skin using frequent separation skin retouching in Photoshop. So, simply like this video, it's a simple request. Like the video because when you like the video, it helps you to push and recommend the video to many people out there, and it's going to also benefit me and the channel in the long run. So, simply hit the like button. You're going to be learning frequent separation skin retouching from the start to the very end, and you'll understand how you can easily smooth and skin. So, you can see. This is the before after. So this is the overall before and after that we are going to be achieving in this very tutorial. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'll be providing you a link to this raw image so that you can practice with this. So I'm just going to come and delete this first of all and come to the image that we want to edit today. So the very first thing I've taken into consideration is always first of all remove the blemishes from uh, the image. So before removing the blemishes, first of all, duplicate the background layer by pressing Ctrl J, or you can use Command J. So just create one copy from the background layer. So I'm going to come and get the patch tool. So come to these options and select the patch tool, and make sure it is in this mode. So the first option is selected. The patch is set to normal. Source and destination are activated. And after doing that, make sure it is transparent. Make sure it is not checked right here. And after doing that, it is time to remove the pimples or the blemishes in this very image. So in order to remove blemishes, just zoom into the image. And how the patch tool basically works, we simply draw around the pimple. So you left click and draw around the pimple and drag the pimple to a clean area. So draw around the pimple. And so how to draw is simply left click and draw around the pimple. So you left click and hold down to draw around the pimple and drag it to a clean area. Just like that. Left click and drag to a clean area. So take your time as you're trying to clean up or remove these pimples and skin imperfections. So you're just going to remove these pimples and I just wanted to show you how this is done in order to achieve the best out of your retouched images. So just draw around the pimples and the blemishes and keep on cleaning the skin. Just do like that and continue removing these pimples and blemishes. Remember, this is basically one of the most important steps for this kind of tutorial because when you don't remove these pimples and blemishes, it is going to be or the photo is going to be a little bit hard for you when it comes to retouching. So always make sure to make the image as clean as possible. So you can see before and after for the pimples you have been able to remove. So take your time as you're trying to remove these pimples and the blemishes so i've already done that because i don't want the tutorial to be a long one so you can see the before and after for removing the pimples or blemishes in this image so after removing the pimples remember we had created one layer from the background layer so i'm just going to come and create a second layer by pressing ctrl j or you can use command j to create a second layer so we're going to double click that layer and name that layer to low frequency or you can name it the color layer and I'm going to name the up layer to high. Or you can name that the high frequency or the texture layer. And after doing that, just come to the low frequency layer and activate it or select it. Hide the high frequency layer. Then we're going to come and come to filter, come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So when you come to Gaussian blur, take the radius all the way to 0 0.1. And remember, this is the most important step when it comes to skin retouching using frequency separation. So we're going to take the radius and stop at the point where by the textures or the skin details are just starting to disappear from the image. So we're just going to sample an area. You can use these options to zoom in and zoom out. So you sample an area that has more skin de details or the skin textures and click on it. And it's going to appear in the preview. Make sure the preview option is turned on. And we left click. So you left click and start dragging up the radius. So left click and start dragging up the radius. So left click and drag up. So just want to stop at the point where by these textures are just starting to disappear from uh, this very image. So at about 12 pixels, that is when I'm just starting to close out on the textures in this photo. So depending on the image that we're working on or depending on the amount of textures that we have in the image, you have to stop at the point where by the details are just starting to disappear. You shouldn't cram. And the lower the radius, what you have to understand, the lower the radius you use for your image, the less skin textures are going to remain with after editing or after applying the frequency separation. 
and the higher the radius you use the more textures you're going to remain within the skin that is why you have to look for a sweet spot whereby the textures are just starting to disappear from the image and click ok and after doing that select the high frequency line and now activate it then you're going to come to image and come to apply image so when you come to apply image the source is the name of the image the layer make sure you select the low frequency layer make sure the channel is set to rgb the blend mode remember we are dealing with an 8-bit image has to be subtract or pass at 100 percent the scale has to be 2 so just type in 2 and offset type in 128 and make sure the invert option is not turned on then if at all you are dealing with an a 16-bit image make sure you use the above settings like i've explained and for a 16-bit image we use the blend mode of add we turn on the invert option the scale has to be to an offset zero make sure these two options are not turned on so after doing that you can hit ok but ours is an 8-bit image so i'm just going to revert to 8-bit settings and don't invert and click ok come to the blend mode and change it from normal and change it to linear light just like that so select both layers and press ctrl g or you can use command g on the keyboard and open up the group so it is time to work on the skin and blend the transitions between the skin hide the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer the reason for doing this is because we want to smoothen out and blend the skin tone transition you can see we have different skin tone transitions in this very image so what we want to do just want to create evenness and blend the colors within the skin tones so we're going to come to the brushes right click and get the mixer brush tool if at all the mixer brush tool is not displaying under the brushes you can locate the mixer brush tool below here so after getting the mixer brush tool for the settings we are going to be using hardness is zero percent make sure clean brush is selected because as we're working on the skin we are dealing with different colors in the photo then make sure the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke has been selected because we want photoshop to automatically clean the brush as we are dealing with different skin color areas or skin tones wet is nine percent load 75 percent mix 90 flat 100 percent make sure sample all areas is not turned on because when you accidentally leave this turned on and you start painting on the skin with this light activated it's going to paint back textures in the skin which you don't want so make sure sample all areas is not turned on and after doing that it is time to apply the mixer brush tool so how to apply basically if at all you don't have a graphics tablet how to apply the mixer brush tool you can use your mouse or your trackpad or touchpad so you simply left click and hold down and you move the cursor left click and hold down and you move to paint and after mixing that area you can release the left click and left click once again on a brand new color area or a brand new color on the skin that you want to blend so i'm just going to left click and mix just like that that area just like that and also left click and mix this other area just like that and you can notice that the skin tones are now blended so when it comes to this highlight area i'm just going to left click and mix that area but after mixing the highlight area you can see that there is that strong transition so we use a small brush and mix that transition to blend it better using a small brush and one thing you have to take into consideration is as you're working on the skin using this technique don't zoom all the way in retouch at a distance because when you zoom all the way in, it is going to create an or you won't be identifying the unevenness in the skin color so retouch at, at a distance and to increase or decrease on the size of the mixer brush tool you can use the open and close box brackets on the keyboard then after identifying that if at all the brush is showing a plus icon press the caps lock key on the keyboard so we're just going to mix this highlight area just like that left click and paint and mix these dark areas on the cheek area and also so we are basically following the way the facial or the way the face is shaped so that we can keep and maintain the original details in the face area so when it comes to the nose area i'll mix or blend in this up down direction just like that and mix these dark areas alone reduce on the size and work on that highlight area just like that so if at all you make a mistake you can always 
undo by pressing ctrl z or you can use command z on the keyboard to undo so i'm just going to come and paint just like that and paint on the nose area and blend the transitions just like that so i'm just going to continue painting because the my talk the longer the video is getting so i'm just going to come and paint just like that reduce on the size and come and mix and blend so it's just a matter of blending but you can notice that as you're doing this the image tends to look a little bit plastic but we're going to be correcting that later on so reduce on the size and also mix just like that and you can see what we have been able to achieve right now remember skin retouching is not only for the face so just want to work on all these areas that have skin you can even smoothen as the fingers even more just smoothen by painting quickly just like that and come to also the neck area and also blend the tones on the neck area so just like that so after doing this you can now come and activate this layer once again and you can see before after before after so if at all you feel like you have a very rough skin texture for your image you can select the high frequency layer and slightly reduce on the opacity to smoothen the image even better so that is what we have so you can see before after before after so if at all you still have blemishes in the image you can open up this group and select the high frequency layer get the clone stamp tool and make sure hardness set to zero mode is normal opacity in the flat hundred percent align this check and sample is set to current layer and now you can zoom in and identify those blemishes that you may have forgotten so to remove that blemish hold down the option key on the keyboard or you can use the alternate key on the keyboard so hold it down and left click on a clean area near the blemish and simply left click once again over the blemish to replace that blemish with clean skin so that is how you can use the clone stamp tool to remove the blemishes that may have remained in your image so just like that we have been able to smoothen the skin and get this desired result so that's before after before after before and after so if at all you have enjoyed this simply like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if at all you are watching and you're not yet subscribed to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and i'll see you in yet more videos on this channel and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating